have tricked you into giving away your sovereign free natural rights and becoming a entity of a corporation known as the United States and becoming a United States citizen. You've given up your rights to allow yourself to be part of a company and now have privileges. So let's get back into the birth certificate. This is where it all starts. Now, um, before 1921, there were no birth certificates. There was no registration of births. What would happen is families would basically enter in the family's names of the people that were born, marriages and even deaths. They would basically put them in their family Bibles. This was actually considered lawful way to record births. There was no requirement of the federal government. Between 1921 and 1933, People started registering birth certificates, marriages, deaths with the government, but yet it was not a law. It was not required, but people were starting to get trained. The way to create a law that entraps people is first you have to get them used to it a little bit. So it takes a while. 1933, our government went bankrupt for the final time. Now what happened was, after 1933, when Roosevelt confiscated all of the people's gold, we ran out of money. After that, all new money had to be borrowed into existence. Now, all states started issuing serial numbered, social security numbers, certified warehouse receipts for births, marriages, deaths, to pledge people as collateral against any new loans. Let's get into your birth certificate so you can understand what that means and why you are not who you think you are and what you're told you are. And there's a difference between you, the natural person, and the way they've tricked you into legally defining you as dead. The real law of the planet is admiralty law, law of the sea. Doesn't literally mean it has to literally be in the water for it to qualify. It is all based on hypothetical situations that they can get around. Now, I'm not an expert in everything, so I'm not gonna know exactly everything, but I'm giving you the 101 versions of everything. So, Admiralty Law is Law of the Sea, and I'm gonna give you a whole information that is either one hell of a coincidence, everything I'm about to say, or it actually has meaning. Again, hidden in plain sight. Now, before I get into the birth certificate, let's talk a little bit about what hidden in plain sight means, so you can understand that. This is how you can get information from people without anybody else knowing about it. Let's say you and I live in New York City and I discover that I get inside information that they're going to nuke New York City on a certain day. And I tell you, well, I can't tell the world about it. I'm only going to tell you, I'm going to save you. And I'm going to leave a symbol that will, once you see it, you'll know to leave because the next day, the city is going to be bombed. So let's say I say, all right, every day I want you to go to Madison Square Garden. And if you see on the Madison Square Garden um, sign, if you see a Donald Duck doll hanging from that sign, that means get out of the city because the next day they're going to bomb it. Now, if you walk there every day and you don't see the Donald Duck, you know that nothing's going to happen. One day you walk up there and you look up and you see a Donald Duck doll hanging from the sign. You know that's code for you to leave. Now, how many millions of people live in New York? How many thousands of people walk past that sign every day? Let's just assume some of the people look up and they're like, wow, what is there a Donald Duck doing hanging on that sign? Well, it's right there in front of them. Some people may even acknowledge it, but if they don't know the meaning behind it, it means nothing to them. So that's what I'm talking about with codes and messages and hidden in plain sight that you could put things right out there in front of people that you and I or the common person, because not me now, but the average person would see just as words or just as symbols would just assume that's what they are. And if you don't know the meanings, whose fault is it? Because all the people that didn't know that that hanging of the dot, that Donald Duck hanging from that sign meant that the next day Manhattan was going to be nuked. Well, anybody that stayed there, not going to be there for much longer. So if you don't know what's going on, you suffer in the long run. And again, I'm only talking legally. So without further ado, let's get into the birth certificate. 
admiralty law comes into play when it comes to your birth certificate. And there's a lot of symbolism and phonetics in words. And when I start mentioning them, you're going to see that, like I said, it's either one hell of a coincidence or it actually means something. And they're trying to tell you if you're smart enough to decode it. So birth certificates, they didn't just create that word for no reason. Before planes, before trains, before anything, when one country wanted to, to send products to another country, they were doing commerce. They would send them via ship. When a, when a boat comes to shore, it docks. Okay. A boat is a vessel. So they, when a boat docks to the shore with its products, okay, it is called, it's reached its birth. Now, it's not B-I-R-T-H, it's B-E-R-T-H, but it's, it's birthing, which means the ship has now arrived. When the captain of that ship wants to bring all of their goods off the boat into the new country, they have to first show a certificate of manifest to show uh, the identity and the items on the ship. Now, your certificate of manifest is gonna show the name of the product, its registration number, country of origin, etc., giving information. So it's being birthed from the vessel to the dock. So your birth certificate is your certificate of manifest. Your social security number is your registration number. Now, if you think about it, we'll talk about actual phonetics. Okay. A woman is the ship. Not literally. Because if you know anything about nautical terms, well, what do they always call a boat? They call it a she. And they always name it on the escutcheon. Well, if you know what an escutcheon is, if you've ever seen in a court or anywhere where a family crest is, that little area that's holding the family crest, in other words, the family name, is called the escutcheon. So you, when you're in your mother's womb, you are in basically her birth canal. Well, you're coming out of her birth canal, but you are in embryonic fluid. In other words, you are in water. You are connected to the mothership, interesting choice of words that they use for that, the mothership, through an umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is connected to her navel. Well, if you know about the military of the sea, it is called the navy. Now, I'm not saying navel and navy are the same word. I'm saying phonetically, they're associating navel with navy. So you are in water. When you are birthed, you are birthed through a vessel. She is the vessel of the carrying of the product, which is the child. Birthed through the birth canal, where you are delivered by a doctor or a doc. Again, I'm not saying when a ship docks, it's not the same as a doctor. I'm talking about the similarity, similarity in the phonetics. So you come from water onto dry land. You come from a birth canal that was submerged in water into dry land where they cut the umbilical cord. They create a certificate of live birth because you are a live human being at that point. Let's say your name is John Smith. When you are born through that womb, through the doctor, they create a manifest. They call it a certificate of live birth. They talk about the parents, in other words, like the country of origin. They give you a social security number. They have the parents sign it over and they send that into the federal government in the United States. You get back a birth certificate, not a certificate of live birth, a birth certificate, just like a ship only they change the name from B-E-R-T-H to B-I-R-T-H. Again, hidden in plain sight. Now, what happens is originally what they would do is when you're born, they would put it in the newspaper. 
Now, because of computers, they do everything on the computer. I think it's through human resources. I don't have that information. Somebody would have to mention it if they know about it. But what they basically do is when you're born, they take on the bottom of your foot. What's the bottom of your foot? Your soul. And they extract blood. They also take the mother's placenta. Now, what is in both of those? Your DNA. Your DNA is the physical proof of evidence of who you are. It's very funny that they take blood out of the bottom of the foot and at the bottom of the foot is called your soul. So they're basically taking your DNA evidence of you out of your soul. So let's get a little bit into the phonetics before I continue with what they do. Because like I said, you are it's going through a birth canal through your mother who's a vestal, vessel. She's the, cap, she's the ship. You're the product. You are delivered. Now, what else can be delivered? Well, a package can be delivered, can it? It's the same thing. And when you are on a ship, well, what else can be shipped? A package. Let's get through some of it. Because if you think about even when it comes to money, I'm going to show you how it has to do with actual admiralty law. Where do you get money? You get money from a bank. Where else can you find a bank? Well, you can find a bank on either side of a river. You have river banks. Now, what does a river do? A river flows to the sea. What's another name for flow? Well, current. So what does a river do? It flows to the sea or current sea. What's another name for money? Current sea. So let's get into the whole fact of when you are born, they make a certificate of live birth which you just think is just them registering your name so they can keep a tab of who's a person in the United States. What they do is they first, they extract your DNA and then they post your name on, in the newspaper. And then they, now they do it. I think it's through human resources, but they're basically what they're doing is they're, they're basically saying, we found this DNA from this particular individual. Can somebody please claim it? It's like a lost and found. And when nobody comes to claim it, because you don't know you're supposed to, because they don't tell you about this, they're basically committing fraud. And what they do is they legally pronounce you dead at sea. And they create a fictional character, a corporation known as a person, John Smith. So when they write that birth certificate, you're going to see your name most of the time. 99 out of 100 people are going to have capital letters. If it's not, that means you either know somebody in government, somebody in your family has been in government, or you're a very wealthy person. There's always exceptions to every rule. But the majority of the masses of people, when they look at their identification and their birth certificate, they're going to see it in all capital letters. That's a corporation. So it's like, for example, if you've ever watched the show Gilligan's Island, all those people got stranded on a desert island for years. Now, in government, they would have actually declared them legally dead. Now, that doesn't mean they're dead. That just means legal dead. There's a difference between a person that's really dead and a person that's legally dead, just like a person who is blind and a person that's legally blind. A person that's legally blind can still technically see, but there's a certain level where legally it's defined as blind. So there's a difference between regular terms and legal terms. So if I said to somebody, you're considered dead, you're going to think that's a ridiculous statement because, well, I'm alive, legally dead. So when you don't, when your parents don't make this claim for this birth, birthing, and they don't make the claim for the DNA, the government, after I think a certain amount of days, I don't know how many, it's irrelevant, but they say, okay, nobody came to claim this DNA. We're going to make a legal corporate account under that name. And again, let's assume the person's name is John Smith. Now, wh why is DNA important? Because DNA is proof of who you are. Because you can say, hi, my name is John Smith. Well, without any proof, isn't that nothing more than hearsay? And you could say, well, I have a driver's license that says John Smith. Well, has anyone ever used someone else's ID before? Does that guarantee it proves who you are? You could have made a fake ID. How does that guarantee? You could say, well, my parents call me that. Well, could you make parents lie for you? and say your name is something else, if they cared for you enough, of course they can. So that's all hearsay. And when I'm talking about a court, they want physical proof. The only thing that could actually physically prove who you are is your DNA, because your DNA is different than anybody else's on the world and probably in the universe. 
So it's a way to be able to prove legally who you are. Well, when you're born, they take ownership of that DNA and they don't tell you. So basically what's happening is they're committing fraud because let's put it this way. There's a thing in law where it's full disclosure of information that can protect you from somebody trying to lie and scam you. In other words, let's say, for example, you want to go buy a brand new car and you look in through this one particular dealership. I'm not going to say any name of a car and you find the car of your dreams. It's thirty thousand dollars. It's everything you want. You took it for a test drive and you loved everything about it. And they're like, this is the car I want. I got the thirty thousand dollars right here. I want this car. And they say, OK, sign here. And they say, by next week, we will have it delivered to you. So you sign the contract. You think you are going to buy that very car that you drove off the lot. Well, you're driving around test driving. A week later, they tow the car to your house. You try and start it. It doesn't start. You lift up the hood and find out there's no engine. Now you're furious. You just spent $30,000 with a car with no engine. You go back to the dealership and you say to them, I bought this car. It has no engine. What are you doing? And they turn around and say, well, sorry, you signed a contract, so you're stuck with it. Well, no, because they didn't give you the full disclosure. In other words, if they would have said to you, this car that you test drive is not going to be the one we're going to sell you. Or before you sign, we're going to let you know that the car that you just drove, the one that you think you're buying, we're going to take the engine out and deliver it to you without an engine, but still charge the same price as if it had one. Sign here. Would you sign? Of course not because you've been given full disclosure. This is where the governments throughout the world trick you. They don't tell you this, so they're not giving you full disclosure. So technically we have a case against them for committing fraud and lying to us. But the reason they get away with it is because no one knew about it. You can't argue what you don't know about. Just like I said earlier in this video, where if you're adopted and don't know it, well, how can you search for parents you didn't know existed? That's how they trick you. So let's get into the fact that when they create this corporation, Again, like I said earlier in the video, a corporation has stock owners, has owners. So you're owned. You have stock in your name that's traded on the New York Stock Exchange. You are a property that is owned by people because it's based on the fact that our country went bankrupt in 1933 and they needed collateral for the loans. You are their collateral. Not you, the person, but you, the fake name that they incorporated because, again, that's the corporation. Like, for example, if you think about Walmart or McDonald's, Walmart and McDonald's, the corporation is not the buildings. It's not the CEO headquarters. It's just the registered name. So John Smith, in all capital letters, on a federal ID in law is a corporation, which means it has owners, your stock. That's why if you'll hear these phrases, it's going to sound very familiar to business and also law of the sea, admiralty law. Because when you're spending time with people that you like, you say, well, they're good company. Good company. If you've ever had two wealthy people get married, you ever hear of people say, oh, they're good stock. What about if you try and get a job where you need to learn how to do it? Well, you're earning a trade. Well, what do you do with stocks? You trade them. Do you ever have somebody that you're having a conversation with and have somebody eavesdrop on you? What do you say? Mind your own business. Marriages are nothing more than the merger of two corporations. That's why you need a marriage license. Having a baby is a product from those two corporations. It's like all of a sudden, if McDonald's and Burger King decided to merge into one company, well, they need a, a license to do that, and they become one corporate entity. Whatever their product is, is what they're birthing. That's the, that's the baby. Now, I'm not talking the live human being. I'm talking about the corporation that they create with the same name. Because if your name is John Smith, and you see a birth certificate that says John Smith in all capital letters, you assume that's you. You know what happens when you assume. So let's get into some of the phrases that you'll see that have to do with admiralty law. and You just don't know it. We use this in everyday life when it comes to business. Well, if you have a lot of bills, you could be drowning in debt. Um, you ever had somebody have a breach of contract? 
Well, what do pirates do when they go to another ship? They breach it. What about if you're backed up on your mortgage payment? Well, your house is underwater. Have you ever had a uh, liquidation sale? Or what about if you're trying to get a bunch of people to, uh, to go in for a lottery ticket? What do they do? They pool the money. Have you ever had a subprime mortgage? Submarine, subprime mortgage. Have you ever been deep in debt or swimming in debt? Have you ever been sailing along in life or coasting by? Or what about if you're about to get a loan and they waive the fees? You know, wave, ocean wave. Or what if you're going to harbor something, like harbor a criminal? If you're just getting by, have you ever heard anyone say, I'm just staying afloat? Or let's say tomorrow you end up winning the lottery. Somebody will say, oh, your ship has come in. When you die, you keel over. You could say you keeled over. Well, a keel is a part of a ship. If you wanted to do something and you decide I changed my mind, I don't want to do it, you could bow out. Well, what's a bow on a ship? Um, if you invested all your money into something and you lost it, well, you sunk all of your money into a business and failed. Have you ever been swamped in debt? I'll, I can go on. Also, let's talk about things that have to do with ship, about relationship, companionship, friendship, dictatorship, starship, spaceship, membership, fellowship, scholarship, citizenship, showmanship, censorship, rulership, gunship, courtship, flagship, lordship. Get it? It's all about having it right in front of you so you don't understand it. They all have to do with boats or the sea. Coincidence? Sure could be. All right, so get back to the birth certificate. So your parents, which are two separate corporations, and if they get married, they're merging, which they need a marriage license. They create a product, your child, and they birth it through a birthing canal. They're coming from water onto dry land where they disconnect the navel, uh, the umbilical cord, which is connected to the navel. Again, Navy, C. They create a certificate of live birth. Your parents sign it, and it is authorized and witnessed by a doctor. So the boat has docked. It has delivered its package. That's why you're in a delivery room. They give you back. They basically take, they extract your DNA from the bottom of your foot, your soul. They take the placenta. Now, they don't take the actual placenta. They just extract a little bit of DNA. Your whole amount of DNA could fit on the needle-sized pin. So it's not like they have a whole bunch of of placentas in a room. They just extract the DNA from it. And they create a birth certificate. What they do is they announce, and that when people don't claim ownership of that DNA, because they don't know they're supposed to, because they don't tell you, because let's put it this way, if a doctor said to you after you were, let's say you're the mother, and the, the doctor says to you, all right, I want you to sign this birth certificate, but before you do, I just want to let you know that what's going to happen is, is we're going to make a corporation in your child's name where we are going to use it as collateral so we can create more debt. Your child is going to spend his whole life having to pay income taxes, uh, different fees. You're going to have to follow our rules, and it becomes a dead fictional corporate entity where he will be basically enslaved through servitude, voluntary servitude, and he will spend his whole life being not what he thinks he is. Sign here. How many of you would you actually do that and do that to your children? Well, the reason you sign that birth certificate is because they don't tell you any of this stuff. They're committing fraud. They're not giving full disclosure. So once you get that, your birth certificate, you are now a registered product of the corporation known as the United States, which is located in the District of Columbia, 20 square mile radius. And because you have that information, you are now part of the corporation. So when you get a driver's license, what do you use as your identification? Well, you use your birth certificate. So you're using a piece of paper that's confirming that you are part of a corporation and you become a US citizen and you become a legal person. And this is how they enslave people. So 
People can say, oh, what's the difference between a country and a corporation? Well, a country, you're a free, sovereign person that can travel the land anywhere you want as long as you're not infringing on the rights of others. With the corporation, you have to do what they tell you. Let's say you work for Walmart. If you work for Walmart, if you want to get paid, let's say Walmart is the only job around and you need to work to pay, pay your bills and buy food. So you need this job. Well, if you want to work for a Walmart, you have to follow their rules. So if they tell you you have to wear a uniform, well, if you want to get paid, you have to wear the uniform. If they tell you you have to scrub toilets, if you want the job and you want the money, you will do what they say. Now, they are also responsible for you. So if you slip and fall in Walmart, they have to be liable. They will pay for the damages. So they want to make sure you're careful. So they set rules of things that you can and cannot do. For example, you can't go around as a Walmart uh, employee punching customers because that can create a fight things can get damaged and the corporation is liable so they create rules so if you punch a, a customer you're going to be fired which means you no longer get the money and the access to what their goods and services are their money their whatever the the, the benefits that they give that you need to survive so they make rules and you could be punished Let's say, for example, you work the register, and every day for a week, your draw is $100 short. Well, they can take it out of your pay. Complain all you want. They'll fire you. So when you're under their rules, when you're under their employment, you're under their rules, you have to do what they say. And that's the difference between a sovereign, free person, a natural person, because there's a difference between a natural person and a person. A person is a corporation. A natural person is an actual, live human being, a sovereign person a sovereign human, lost my train of thought. All right, so basically what's happening is, is your government has lied to you. They have created a phony fictional character with your name on it, which you assume is you, which means you are now a part of that corporation and you are a stock. You are traded on the stock market, not you, the actual person, your corporate name that you assume is you. So when you got a driver's license, when you registered to vote, when you paid taxes, you have now volunteered your servitude. Remember when I talked about that before in the 13th Amendment about slavery? You have volunteered to serve for this corporation. But like with the vampire who tricked you, your government tricked you into serving a foreign country, a corporation, and you are basically a traitor, and you're not who you think you are. Now, again, these things are all found in Black's Law Dictionary, DC Code. Like, for example, if you want to look up, get a pen and paper, DC Code 7-241 under definitions. Okay, agency. Under the law, under DC Code, the word agency means an agency, department, unit, or instrumentally, or instrumentally of the District of Columbia government. So if you're an agent of something, you're actually, that means under law, you're a part of this little 20 square mile radius. You're under their jurisdiction, you're subject to it. An individual is a single person. So person we know is a corporation. So if you're listed somewhere on a document, a federal document or a government document that lists you as an individual, well, legally, that means you're a single person, which means you are a corporation. If you are no, if you are listed as an identified individual, that means you're a natural person. Let's go under DC Code 7-621 under definitions. A physician, legal terms, is a person authorized to practice medicine in the District of Columbia. Well. If you are a physician anywhere else, and you are a U.S. citizen, you're under their jurisdiction. See how it all goes back to the same thing? If you look under DC Code 7-201 in definitions sub part 10, it will show the, the, the actual proof that a person is a corporation. Um, if you look at the DC Code um, Title 28, uh, 3002, Section 15, A, B, and C, they talk about the United States as a corporation. And just before it, in Section 14, they have the definition of a state. The state is basically an entity of 
the United States. In other words, states are franchises. So if you live, let's say, for example, let's go with McDonald's. McDonald's, let's say their corporate headquarters is in um, New York City. I don't know where it is. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. You have McDonald's in Florida. You have McDonald's in California. You have McDonald's in Alaska. You have McDonald's in France. They can't just all of a sudden in any of those places decide, oh, I'm going to sell Kentucky Fried Chicken, or I'm going to sell Burger King, or I'm going to sell Hammers. They have to do what the corporate headquarters located in Manhattan says because they are under their jurisdiction. They're just not in the same areas. That's exactly what states are according to law. So if you live in New York State, New York State is not the landmass. Hold on. That's the corporation known as New York, the state of New York. It just says the name New York. It's a registered name that's filed in Washington, D.C. So the states are franchises because the original states were called union states. They were free from, they were basically individual com countries and they were eventually united. That's why they were called the United States of America because what was the landmass called? America or North America. And what were they? They were states. And what did they do? They united, United States of America. All they did was, in 1871, is create the District of Columbia and created a corporation known as the United States. You've just been conditioned because you've heard that all your life. Tell a lie long enough, it becomes truth. But I wanted to get the majority of what's going on in one video so you can get a clear picture of what happened to you, why it happened to you. Now, but actually, before I do that, how do you get out of it? Well, the Constitution, not the original Constitution that was created in 1789, which was the Constitution for the people of the United States of America, which means the, the we, the people, told the government what to do. They changed it to the Constitution of the United States, not the country, the corporation. So they redid it in 1871. They rewrote the Constitution and created a, con a second Constitution for the District of Columbia 20 square mile radius known as the United States. That Constitution is only in effect because of the consent of the governed. Silence can equal consent. And I've used this example, but I'll use it here again just in case. Let's say a bunch of us are going to dinner and we've all agreed that we're going to pay our separate ways. And we get our dinner, get our drinks, eat our dinner, finish our drinks. And at the end, we have a dessert. And we all decide, you know what? Let's order a cake. Let's say there's 10 of us. They cut the cake into ends up 11 pieces. And there's one piece left over. I, I finish before everybody else. Now, under the law, if I want that piece, I can make a legal claim for it. And I say to everybody, I'm going to take that last piece of cake. So in law... I am making a legal claim for that cake. I would become the executor of that trust, the other people, and also the beneficiary, because obviously I would benefit from having that piece of cake. The other people would become trustees in trust law. So I'm the executive or the administrator of that trust. In other words, I'm creating that trust. I also am the beneficiary of that trust because I am benefiting from getting that cake. And the trustees are the people that witness it. They have no involvement. Now, if I make a legal claim for that piece of cake, everybody else can say, go ahead and take it, or no, you can't take it, or let's cut it up, or whatever. But if they all don't react to my claim, and let's assume they all heard what I said, and they just ignore it, and they don't say anything, under law, I now have the right to take it because of their silence. It means they did not dispute it. In other words, they didn't say, no, you can't take it. So the silence in law is the same as consenting to that request. So because the Constitution, this made up Constitution, the second Constitution that was created for the District of Columbia, known as the Corporation of the United States, it only is in effect because of the consent of the governed. We are the governed. So because we don't argue it, it stays in effect.
The reason we don't argue it, it's just like I said in the beginning, where if you don't know you were adopted, you're never going to seek your natural parents because you don't know they exist. Why? Because you didn't find out about it or you weren't told about it. So because you don't know what legal citizen meant, and because you didn't know what legal person meant, and you didn't know the definition of slavery as involuntary servitude, and you decided to become a U.S. citizen without knowing what that meant, you have served and you are giving your consent because no one is arguing it or not enough people are arguing it. Basically, if 51% of the people of the United States of America all decided to say we are going to waive our benefits and privileges and no longer consent to this phony, made up, lying document, it would no longer have any hold and we would not have to pull a trigger we would not have to shoot anyone. We would not have to hurt anyone. We would not have to cause threats. It's just like, for example, if that vampire knocked on the door and you knew that person was a, a vampire and the only way they can get you is if you invited them in, well, all you have to do is just not invite them in, saying nothing, turning your back, shutting the door. There has, there's no fight involved because under the law, whatever it is, the reason that they can't get you, I don't know. But they're saying is a vampire cannot come into your home without being invited. So the only way they can be invited in where you'll willingly invite them is to trick you. So if the people realize what's going on, and this is why I want this video spread, and this is why I want this information out, because I've been hearing from people that my other videos are being silenced because they don't want this information out, that once the majority of the people of this country, all around the world, the majority of the people say we no longer consent, their game is over. The only reason it continues is because we don't argue it. And that's why they have tell a vision. That's why they own the public schools. That's why they own the media, except for the internet. Now you can understand why they're trying to get rid of it so much, because they don't want this information out. They want it controlled. You control the outlet of information. You control what comes in and what goes out. And they can make up any story they want. Like I said, they told you that the Civil War was based on the fact of just freeing slaves. They also told you that the Iraq war was based on weapons of mass destruction. They don't ever tell you the truth because if they told you the truth, you would not accept it. And that's why, like when they tried to do the, the, the recent event with Syria, people are starting to wake up and realize what's going on. Notice they didn't attack Syria. Why? Because we didn't give them the consent. And we are more powerful than you think. So when people say things like, how do we get ourselves out of the system? Well, one or two people may get out of the system here and there. But it doesn't change the whole thing because the whole thing is corrupt because of the lie and because we have been assuming what certain things meant. Ignorance in the law is no excuse. So if we wake up and say we no longer consent, we're all out of the system. And then we create a new way of life. Now, what do I know what that is? I don't know. But it's like, for example, if you're a prisoner, excuse me, you're used to being fed, you're used to being taken care of. If all of a sudden you open the gate, after 30 years of being in jail and being taken care of, and they say, you're free to go. You're going to be scared to death. You have no job. You haven't seen outside world in three decades. You're going to be scared. You might actually tell them, close the door. And that's what's happening with us. We want them to enslave us and take care of us. That's why we have welfare. That's why we have all these things. But we can also be punished. We can also be executed. We can also be imprisoned if we don't follow their rules. So people have this attitude of thinking, well, as long as I get mine, it'll be okay. Well, you notice throughout history, all world, all different kingdoms, countries, nations, they all collapse. Why? Because the people at the top get so greedy and they steal so much, eventually it topples over and everybody suffers. So we're either the exception to the rule throughout recorded history or we're going to repeat what everybody else has done, which means eventually this collapses and everybody suffers. Now, do you think the really rich and the really prepared are going to be suffering? Or do you think it's going to be the masses that are living day to day, dependent on the government to take care of them? And when the gov government fails and the monetary system fails and you no longer have your medications from the government or you no longer have your Social Security check or your welfare check and you have no actual skill or trade, what do you do? So, so many people will actually fight for that system to keep it alive. And as long as you make a little bit of fiat dollars, little fake debt notes, you think you're doing good. 
But you're just creating the slave system. You're keeping it alive. You're keeping the giant alive. So in the long run, you're hurting your children. You're hurting their children. And eventually, it all comes crumbling down. So we are always waiting for these politicians to help us. These politicians are part of this system. They pretty much know what's going on. And that's how they word things. Like I had videos actually catching the lie. Because if you don't know what's going on, you'll miss just basic words. Or watch a movie and you see something that is in code that you don't understand. Allegory. Even like the Bible. The Bible even says it's allegory, which means it's not meant to be taken literally. It's coded messages. To the ignorant or the naive, it's just a bunch of stories that they end up ultimately believing in because they were programmed to believe it because they were programmed year after year, day after day. And eventually you tell a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. So when everybody out there starts spreading this information, starts really learning, get yourself a Black's Law Dictionary. Look at the Constitution. Look up those DC codes I talked to you about. See it for yourself. This is not some conspiracy theory. The only reason conspiracy theory is so evil as it sounds and people think it's associated with crazy people is the fact that the media, which is bought and paid for by the government, has made it into the scary thing. Because people say, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. Well, if anybody just knew that the definition of conspiracy is just when two or more people conspire to do something, it doesn't sound so scary. But if you want to continue to be programmed and distracted, make a little bit of fake fiat dollars, not realizing that for every dollar created, there creates debt, which we have to pay back. And how do we pay back for it? With our labor. So what is the purpose of a slave? Purpose of a slave is for a master to get somebody else to do the work for them. What are we spending our whole lives doing? Borrowing money, which creates debt. They create their Money, it's not money, it's currency. Money is not what they give us, not since 1933. They're giving us numbers on a computer screen. The Federal Reserve, which is owned by the shareholders of major banks and places like Goldman Sachs, they own the Federal Reserve, who bailed themselves out. So when you write a check, you have to make sure you have that money in the bank, otherwise that check bounces. Well, when banks want to borrow money from the Federal Reserve, and they write them a check or send them a digital number, they have no money in their account. They're just making up invisible numbers. They loan those out to you and I. They don't give us money. Like if you want to buy a car for $30,000, and you go to the bank to get a $30,000 loan, they don't push $30,000 in $1 bills or $100 bills to you. They write you a check. So they're giving you nothing. But you have to spend the rest of your life working and using your labor to be able to pay back in real actual dollars that amount plus interest. That is a Ponzi scheme because what they don't tell you is, is they create money only to the point of the principal. They don't include the interest. So if you paid off the debt completely, there would be no money left in existence to pay off the interest. So that's why every year they have to raise the debt ceiling. It's because they get to a point where they've reached the principal amount and they don't have enough money to pay for the interest because they don't create that money. So they have to borrow more money on top of that. But that creates more interest and it goes on and on and on until one day it collapses in on itself. Can it happen tomorrow? Sure. Could it happen in a hundred years? Sure. But like the people on Pompeii who lived with, with an active volcano that didn't erupt for thousands of years, it only takes one tragic event to destroy a nation. So if you want to take that chance, please do nothing and just hope that your time is not now that this stuff occurs. If you research history, and really research history, not just what you program through a government-owned public school. Because if you are a U.S. Senator, if you are a U.S. Postal Service man, if you are a United States Marine, you are not protecting the country of North America. You are protecting the corporate interest in the District of Columbia. So if you're a policeman, if you're a military soldier, 
you're serving a corporation. You're protecting the fake constitution, not the real one that was created in 1789. So they're using you, and they're using you by taking the punishment of the people. So like, for example, if a cop pepper sprays somebody or abuses them, people will say, oh, that's cruel. How could he get away with that? Well, you're legally dead. Now, again, I'm not saying you're, I'm not dead. I'm alive. You see, I'm talking. I'm alive. But under the law, I'm legally dead. Zombie. You ever wonder why they make so many zombie movies? Those zombie movies are actually making fun of you. You're the zombie. You're the living dead. That's why when a person is about to be executed, when they walk down to the execution chamber, what do the prisoners all say? Dead man walking. Well, what's the most popular zombie movie these days? Walking Dead? They're talking about you, your fictional character. So when a cop is beating up a citizen or a person, they're beating up their property. They have every right to do it, even though it doesn't sound right. And I'll give you a prime example of what that means. If you own a television, you bought and paid for your television. Can you get in trouble for smashing it? Of course not. It's your piece of property. You can't get thrown in jail for murdering a TV. It's a property. If you have a dog and it's sick and you have to put it down, you're basically murdering it, right? Do you get thrown in jail for that? No. Why? Because your dog is your property. It may be cruel, but it's property. Let's say you're a cattle rancher. And you raise cattle to ultimately turn them into steaks and other meats. Well, you can brand that cattle, can't you? Don't you think that'll hurt those animals? They're live animals. It'll hurt them. You get in trouble for it? No, it's your property. What are you ultimately doing when you turn a cow into meat that you sell? Well, you're murdering them. You're killing them. You're executing them. You get thrown in jail for doing that, even though they're live? They're animals. They're living, breathing species of the planet and you're extinguishing their life by murdering them you get thrown in jail for that no why because they're your property so when a cop or a soldier or someone in the government decides to throw you in jail kidnap you or beat you up or pepper spray you or even murder you they don't get in trouble that's why they don't get in trouble cops don't get thrown in jail they get the very best a paid vacation why? Because they do that to show face, because if they really knew that it was just property and they could do whatever they want, people would be outraged and they'd overthrow the government in two seconds. So they have to, you know, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. So sometimes you have to sacrifice a few people and you give them a paid vacation for what they've done. Meanwhile, they've killed your child or your, your, your family member or a friend. Why? Because you're a piece of property and you don't know it. You don't know it. You're legally dead. So cops aren't doing anything out of their jurisdiction because they're part of a corporation united states policemen or u.s military when they go into other countries all they're doing is is, is expanding the franchise of the of that corporation and they're killing other people to do it and you as a soldier if you're a soldier you're being used because it's not the government who's making all the money off of this and taking all the resources they're not the ones putting their life on the line they're not the one taking other people's lives they're making you do it and you think you're doing it to protect your country. So when you, as a policeman or a military man who's given an oath of office, reread your oath of office. It says to protect and serve the United States, not the United States of America, not the country. You're serving the corporation. So when people talk about the United States as a corporation, now you know that it's not the landmass. It's just that one little tiny dot. And they've tricked us all to be part of it because of our ignorance. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. You are now no longer ignorant. Now, since I'm not asking for anything, since I've done this because I care about my fellow human beings, because if I help everybody else to awaken and they end up deciding we no longer consent to this lie, well, it helps me, doesn't it? So that's my reward. The only thing I ask for is for you all to share this video, to make someone else watch it, because YouTube is silencing videos like this. They don't want this out. And if one day they take control of the internet, this information is no longer able to come out and they can do whatever they want. And if you're tired of them taking your money, because it's not yours, when you put your money in a bank, you're actually giving it back to the Federal Reserve. Because if you look at the dollars, they say Federal Reserve notes, they're debt notes. So the only reason that they get away with it is because when you, let's say you deposit $10,000 Federal Reserve notes into your bank account, 
they put a digital number that says 10,000 on it. They just do that to keep you from saying, hey, where'd all my money go? They're not gonna tell you you actually gave it back. When you're done kidding yourself and making fun of this, because I'll have people that'll make fun of this and call it crazy. Those are people that are the first day student trying to tell me, the French teacher, that I don't know what I'm talking about because the words that are coming out of my mouth sound crazy. Who the hell do they think they are? They know nothing and they're gonna base it on either being paid to be part of the system to try and break it down or people that are just so afraid to know the truth that they will do everything to protect it because maybe they're on welfare and they need the system. How many inventions have been stopped because of this corrupt government? How many diseases could have been cured decades or centuries ago? Look at the inventions of, really look up Nikolai Tesla. We could have had wireless communication and wireless free electricity in the 1800s. Just imagine where we'd be technologically if we didn't have to pay for electricity. And we didn't have all these wires. Storms wouldn't damage it anymore. Look at people like Wilhelm Reich, who actually helped cure cancer. He had a machine that could actually cure people. He had a weather manipulation device that could actually create rain. Just imagine if you lived in the desert or you lived in parts of Africa. Don't you think a weather machine that could create weather clouds would come in handy? Well, that person in the 1950s demonstrated his machine and was arrested by the FDA, thrown in jail. His invention was destroyed. His work was destroyed. And most of you have never heard of him. This is what our government does. If this is what you want to be a part of, you know, people say, oh, how could we live without roads and all the things that the government is providing? Yeah, they're giving us a few little carrots. But just imagine if they let all the technology that we've had for centuries happen, we'd be in flying cars right now. We would be having machines that you press a button, it creates food. And you can laugh all you want. If you look at 3D printers today, just with the regular technology that they're allowing us to have, they have a 3D printer that actually can print out food. Right now, it's just candy. But they're taking a 3D printer and creating food. And 3D, regular 3D printers that can create actual things. And just imagine if we had that technology 100 years ago, where we would be. And we didn't have governments stopping these things from happening by stealing patents and buying patents. Half the inventions that would make this world a much better place, we wouldn't even have to worry about bridges and roads. How We'll never see the light of day under the corporate rule. And that's why when people talk about the president and they talk about the fact that, you know, oh, well, the president can't be president because he was born in Kenya. Well, if you are the owner of Walmart and you ended up wanting to have a president of your corporation, do you care where he comes from? Of course not. Anybody can be who you want in your business to run it. It's irrelevant. If you appreciate this, I ask you to share it. I ask you to give it a thumbs up. I want you to comment. I want you to watch this with other people. I want you to watch this 6,000 times and you get it memorized. If there's something I haven't mentioned you have a question about, you can either email me or watch a bunch of my other videos because there may have been things I've forgotten in this video, even though it's long. And I know some people will say, oh, well, you know, who wants to just stare at a person talking all the time? Well, what'd you do when you were in school? Don't think that you need to always be visually entertained with fancy music and fancy effects. Listen to the words. I'm speaking truth truth that can be verified if you're willing to take the effort. 